I hope you guys like heavy metal because I now have the heaviest piece of metal in my vintage computer collection. Like all beasts, it stinks and it's gonna need a bath before it can stay in my house for too long. And I'm not sure if it works or not or what condition it's in. But I figured I'd share with you guys what I go through when I get some new archaic piece of hardware like this and I'm trying to sort it out before I plug it in and see if it goes kaboom. Now I know you're thinking the Amiga 2000 wasn't a tower. So like what is going on here, right? Well, this was this add-on full tower conversion from this company named BOMAC, which allowed you to run extra hard drives. In this case, I'm pretty sure we have a, a giant full-size five and a quarter hard drive right here and an extra PC power supply. It was handy if, uh, you know, back in the day, drives aren't small and easy to install like, like they are now. So, I mean, if you wanted to run several hard drives, you just needed more space than what you could probably get in a small Amiga 2000 case. All right, now first off, let's look at some of the really weird features of this case. Now, they might make sense to some of you guys because you probably use Amigas a lot more than I do. So if you have any input on this thing, let me know what you got. I've never seen a computer case that did anything like this before. Just grab this and hey, it's got a hinge and we got some wires going on there. Some more dirt going on. And uh, a couple ports on the back. And on the front here, we have a couple mystery switches. I have no idea what these do, but I have a feeling one of them is probably the power switch. Now, if we go over here to the side, the side of the case is on a hinge also. Uh, Bomac made this apparently where you could service your Amiga 2000 pretty easily. And if you look inside of this, you'll see something else that's strange. It's not gonna be apparent actually until I start pulling this apart. The original Amiga 2000 bottom case is bolted into this Bomac tower conversion case. It's got a lot of uh, dust and stuff in the bottom. Let's lay this thing down on its side and we'll start having a look at what's inside. We got it pried open and I noticed a couple things right off the bat. Some of them are good and some of them are bad, but first I'll show you the interesting aspect of the the drive bays are held on by zip ties here and wood screws right here. A little bit loose, we'll have to do something about that. But the good thing is somebody had the foresight to install a coin battery conversion in here at some point. So I'm not gonna have to deal with the acid dissolved motherboard problems that a lot of these old Amigas have. Let's yank these cards out and see what we got to work with. First up, we have this IVS Grand Slam SCSI interface card. And it's got SIM slots for up to eight megabytes of memory, as well as an optional metal bracket that you can mount an internal hard drive to. I don't actually know why you would have eight megs of RAM on your SCSI interface card, so if anyone wants to tell me about that, please feel free. Uh, this is a, a daunting task for me. I'm not an Amiga expert. I'm pretty good with hardware and I've dealt with a lot of other computers, so I'll, I'm sure I'll figure it out. But maybe you guys could help me out with my research. Next up, we have an AGA 2000, which is a flicker fixer card. If you don't know what a flicker fixer is, it's a Amiga terminology for something that takes the low refresh rate original signal that these things put out and kind of increases it to a point where you can use it on better standard VGA monitors from what I understand. Of course, I'm not an expert on these either. So if anyone wants to prove me wrong, please feel free. Now this card is where things start to get super interesting for me. This is a PC emulator card. It's got a 4.77 megahertz 8088 processor, 512K of memory, and apparently, from what I understand, can do CGA graphics, as well as allow your Amiga 2000 to run PC cards in the other ISA slots, which is really difficult for me to wrap my head around, but I'm sure I'll get it eventually. And finally, the crown jewel here is this 68040 accelerator card the Fusion 40. Now, from what I read, these things can operate at between 20 and 33 megahertz. I'm not sure what speed this operates at, but it's got a 56 megahertz crystal in there if anybody wants to clue me in. Now, while these things are out, it's a good idea to clean up these edge connectors with some alcohol or a pencil eraser. Personally, I'm gonna use both because these things have been stored in a humid environment, which uh, is pretty much all of New Orleans. Another good idea is to find any car, any uh, ICs that are socketed and just give them a press. Because sometimes these things get loosened up from the ages and an unseated IC can cause you all kinds of problems. 
I went ahead and removed the wood screws and pulled the top two drives out. We got this cassette drive or a, a tape backup drive and this thing is going to get retired. I, I don't think it works, but I don't really need it for anything either. Now on the interesting end of business, we have this giant six pound full size old school SCSI hard drive. I really hope this thing works because the guy told me that he had ran a local bulletin board for Amigas back in the 90s. And, and if this thing has the data on it, I would love to, to pull it off and possibly, it'd be cool if I could work with the Amiga community and figure out if I could put this board back up somehow through maybe an emulator or a virtual server or something. Something I noticed on here, which is really interesting as an electronics guy is the, uh, the volt rating there, it uses obviously like a 12 volt and five volt power supply, but the current rating is nuts. That right there says 1.2 amps or 2.7 amps peak. So this thing is gonna be a huge stress on the power supply, which is one of the reasons amongst many why it's definitely not going to be plugged in while I power this thing on for the first time. This massive beast of a hard drive is branded as a mini scribe, which is kind of funny because it's freaking giant. I'll bet you it's going to sound like a 747 when it spools up. Now here's the disk drives I pulled out. A couple Chinon FB354s. They're both the same thing. One of them has no face plate on it. I'm going to take these things to work tomorrow and blow them out during my lunch break. They got a lot of dust and crap in them, you can see. Then I'm just going to do the regular stuff. I'll clean up the heads and maybe uh, try to clean and grease the tracks if I can get down to them. Now the power supply looks surprisingly clean on the inside. I'm kind of used to these things being full on rat nests from looking into old PC power supplies. None of the caps seem to be bulging on the top. The original fuse is intact, it doesn't appear to be blown. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this an okay for a, a test run. Looking pretty clean in here. I put a couple screws into the motherboard that were missing and discovered I had a really cool two megabyte mega chip, which is an Angus upgrade. Thanks to the guys on the Commodore Facebook group for pointing that out to me. I, I felt kind of uh, silly. They were like, what kind of question is that? But I, I don't know too much about Amigas, so this is, this is gonna be really awesome for me to learn on. All right, I put it together and I put only the flicker fixer on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try turning this on. And from my experience, one of three things is going to happen. It's either just going to turn on and work fine. It's going to not turn on and nothing's going to happen or something's going to explode in the power supply. Let's see which one it's going to be. Ooh, we're spinning. That's good. Display just picked up something. Come on, monitor work. Now this thing works with my Atari ST at a low re refresh rate. So I'm hoping it'll work with this as well but I'm not seeing, oh, hey, all right. Well, let's take this a little further and see what else works. Maybe I can get this hard drive running. Next, we're gonna see if it works with the Fusion 40 accelerator card installed. Let's give it a go. Screen's coming up. Looking pretty good there, huh? Come on, big one. Oh, there we go. Sweet. All right. I guess I'm going to throw the, uh, the SCSI card in in the hard drive next. See how that goes. Got the hard drive plugged into the SCSI card. God, this thing is huge. So the, the previous owner told me that I was going to have to start the computer twice to get it to, uh, to see the hard drive. And I'm thinking that's because you're going to have to start it up and let this thing spin for a couple seconds get up to speed and then turn it back off and then back on again so that when it gets to the point in the boot sequence where it initializes the hard drive or whatever, it's actually spinning. So uh, let's see how this works. I'm gonna cross my fingers and pull the switch. Nice. Plus maybe the microphone will pick up that spinning action. It's pretty crazy. Alright. See if anything comes up on the screen. Everything's 
He makes all kinds of noise. Crazy. Come on, you can do it. Oh, hey. It looks like it actually worked on the first go. Sweet. Now I have no idea what to do from here. Um, let's see if the keyboard works. Hey, the keyboard works. <sighs> awesome. All right, guys. This is uh, this is going to be where I sign it off for this video. I, I think I've gone through pretty much what I do. There's going to be some more buttoning up done on this system. But, uh, yeah, this is just how I do it when I get something new that hasn't been turned on in forever. Uh, there, there is this second part. I mean, you can't really tell if the computer's going to catastrophically fail unless it's been on for like 30 or 45 minutes. But uh, the previous owner was, was pretty confident with this machine, so we'll see how it goes. That's it for this time, folks. If you want to keep up with our cool retro projects, hit that subscribe button.